In this clip, I want to add some sashes kind of coming down from this wood piece, and I want to drape them over some little gold hooks that I want to make for the side of the belt. And so let's create the hooks first. So I'm just going to go to create polygon primitive, and let's just create a cylinder. Let's rotate this in the Z 90 degrees. And let's take our radius down. You can also uh, use the transform tools if you want to. Take this down and move it up and I'll start on his left side. So let's take our height down. And then if you want to go ahead and just start using your scale, if you're working at a scale where that makes it a little bit easier. That's cool too. And I want to just put it kind of halfway and I'm just going to stick it right outside of here for now. And let's take this down a little bit more. So something like this. Let's add some subdivisions on the cap. Just like that. All right. So now I am going to select all of these polygons in the center here. Now let's hit control E to extrude. And I'm just going to pull these straight out. And let's take the divisions down a little bit. I'm just going to go down to maybe three. All right, now with this selected, there's several ways that we can do this. I just want, I don't want to have a, like a 90 degree, but I just want a little bit more of an angle to this. And so we can come in here and curve this and come in here and curve that. Make it something more like that. If you wanted to come in and add a little bit more, you could extrude out another one. Take our divisions down, maybe pull this out and maybe pull it back like that. So we want something like that. I can also select the polygons in the center, control drag to deselect those. Now we only have the polygons selected that are in the middle we can delete those. And then let's take a look at the size. I think that's pretty good on the size. And we can go ahead and move those into here. Okay, so think of this is if this is wood, this is going to be gold kind of attached to it. And then I want to have some cloth, a thin strip of cloth that comes down and drapes itself over this to kind of tie everything together. So to do that, I'm going to start with a plane. So create a polygon plane. Let's move it up here. And I'm just going to rotate this. And I'm going to go into the creation node for this, and I'm just going to take down our divisions and the width and let's take our height divisions down to maybe three or four uh, maybe five is good i'm gonna go ahead and scale this down and then i want to position it behind the sort of the wing shape there on the wood so kind of right behind here and I'll kind of angle it a little bit to match that. Okay. So something like that, and we can push it more into the surface there or underneath the surface rather. All right. So now what I want to do is I want to create where the, where this uh, fabric is going to actually droop down and hang over. So let's go to, let's say the side view here. So in the side view, let's go ahead and turn our template off so that we can see things a little bit better. And I am going to use the curve tool to start drawing out my curve. I want it to droop down, come back over the hook, and then kind of end down here somewhere. And if you want a sharper curve like this, you are going to have to put points closer together. Now, when you draw this out, it's going to be aligned to a plane. So it's going to be completely flat. It's going to be at zero, zero. So you can see it's right along the center line. So what we need to do now is just move it over into position, and then we'll need to move these points. So we can do that in our perspective view. As you can see here, we can grab those points and just move them out. We'll grab this one so that we get a little bit of a more realistic droop there. 
And the droop on the back we know is going to be straight down. This one we can move a little bit more till we get something that looks a little bit more realistic. All right, let me turn our template back on. So we get something like that. Now I'm going to go to the plane and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit and just rotate it to more align with the curve. I can go back to the curve, go to the CV, align it a little bit more. And now what I want to do is go ahead and select this object. I'm going to select the edges. So from here to here, then I'll shift select the curve. And now I want to go to extrude again. So we'll go to edit mesh. Let's go to extrude and we'll open up the options. We're going to add several divisions to this and I'm just going to maybe put 10. Since we selected a curve, it's automatically turned on selected curve. So it's going to use that curve to extrude along. So we'll say extrude. And now you can see that that's extruded along there. Now you can also increase your divisions to make it smoother but I'm going to decrease those for now just so I can deal with this little bit right in here. So we'll go ahead and say, okay to that. And then I'm going to come in here, grab each of these edges that are near the hook. And I'm just going to scale the edge itself in a little bit. If it's still intersecting, I'm going to rotate and move it and I'll make it the kind of the thinnest at that point where it, intersects there and we can kind of pull this out so it's not intersecting we'll do the same thing here shrink it down and then on the back the idea being that obviously it's bunched together in this spot kind of rotate that scale this a little bit less Move and rotate it so it's not penetrating. Move this one out. And these will just move to the side. And this one will have to go into wireframes so we can get the just the bottom. And now we just kind of make it look good. Pull this one out a little bit. And then here, remember when we inserted that edge loop with the edge flow turned on, we can use that in this case as well. There's some places where we definitely need to add more lines in here. And so let's go into our insert edge loop tool. We've got edge flow turned on. So I'm going to add an edge right in there, right around the hook. And then I'm going to add a couple in here. And then down here where we're trying to curve around, you can see how that pops it out, helps with that curve a little bit. And then that gives us a few more edges that we can then kind of pull out. Kind of something like that. So this kind of gives us a way to tie together some of the different pieces and it's very ornamental. And so that kind of goes along with that theme of him being really fancy. Can scale this down a little bit more. All right, so something like that. And see how it's curving around like that. Can maybe start to add a little bit of shape to where it's not, it's kind of more pulled down a little bit. All right, and then all we'd have to do to create the other side I don't think we've done this yet. So let's go ahead and copy this over to the other side. There are several ways that we can do this. One of the ways we can do it, we'll do one. Let's do it with the, uh, the hook here. So let's go ahead and delete the history on the hook. And so I'm going to go into mesh. Let's go into mirror. I'm going to turn off cut geometry. I'm going to copy and use the world X and I want it to go in the negative X. So go ahead and mirror it. And now we've got one object with two pieces in it, right? So if I select one, they're both actually in it. So it's creating a copy mirrored across the X axis, but they're both in the same object. 
if you didn't want to do that, if you wanted to keep them separately, then you could also come in here and we turn off this combine with original and go ahead and mirror that. You can see those are now two separate pieces. There's another way to do this as well that is a little bit more hacky. You could duplicate this and scale it across the X axis is what we used to do a lot of times, but mirroring it works fine. And so you also want to check whenever you do those mirror uh, mirrored effects there, you also want to check the normals too. Because if in the past, if you copy this over and it would be scaled negatively and it, it would affect the normals and the whole deal, uh, but these are look good. So once we've got the sashes created, the next thing that we need to add are these hip pieces. I want to have some wood pieces that kind of are half circles that come down along the hips. So let's go ahead and tackle those next.